In order for people to live a full life, they have to have a foot in order. That order has to be commensurate with what it is that they're attempting. So their lives are properly ordered if they have goals and the procedures they put in place to attain those goals are working. That gives them security and hope. They also have to have a foot in chaos because part of proper being is not merely security, which is what order provides, but also the continual generative excitement that being on the edge allows. And the edge, which everyone knows about, is the edge between order and chaos. And you can tell you're there because that's when life is worth living. Surfing was, was sacred to the Hawaiians because the Hawaiians could see that when a surfer mastered a wave, he was physically embodying the balance between order and chaos. The rule is you have to confront chaos and make it back into order. And you must do that because otherwise your life becomes unbearable. It's a bit unruly here. But so it goes. Disorder out of order, order out of disorder. It all gets a bit chaotic sometimes, doesn't it? To crack the code on this notoriously secretive industry, can you get a good deal on 47th Street? Welcome to the Diamond District. Is it predominantly a Jewish community that's in the diamond business? It used to be no more. 26, and let's shake on it. Let me tell you, 26 is a very lucky number in Judaism. OK. We got a deal on 26. We did a deal. OK, I probably made more noise than anybody <laughs> ever makes in here. I'm now, what kidding. was the term? Mazal, good luck. Bracha means blessing. Mazal bracha. You got it. Mazal okay. bracha. 26,000. 26,000. You got a great deal on this. Who is it? Tower next door. I, I live in E. Who is it? Tower next door. I, I live in E. Check no. this out. I don't know. All right. Okay. So these are black Jews. Yeah. All right. They're stranded in the middle of Ethiopia. It's deep. And I'm watching this and I'm like, what the? What are these guys wearing? Look, it's on the Torah there, it's everywhere. In Ethiopia, I had thought that all the Jews had migrated to Israel, but then I found out that that's not exactly the case here in Gondar, a city in the northwestern region of the country. Shalom. Today, around 4,000 of them remain, who are known as Beta Israel in the world of Judaism. Where do these guys get precious black opals? That's what that is. The black opal. I do my research, these guys live near the whale of mine. Ethiopia is modern name. The biblical term uh, at that time it uh, was Kush, the kingdom of Kush or the Kushites, Terhaka, king of Ethiopia. The actual Hebrew is Kush and Kush means black because they were dark skinned is Terhaka, king of Ethiopia. He was the king of the Kushites. He was a black king and he was actually so powerful and so well known that he actually ruled Egypt as well. This is one of those rare circumstances where the Kushites in the south uh, had so invaded uh, Egypt that, that they were actually the pharaohs of Egypt. So when it says here Terhaka, king of Ethiopia, he's actually also the king of Egypt. These black pharaohs, as they were called, ruled for a short time until the Egyptians uh, got back on top of them. In actual fact, it was in its full heyday uh, when the Greek and the Roman empires were just beginning and rising up. Uh, and indeed, they were still there when the Romans declined. Seventeen months to get this thing, oh, okay? Why's it got so many colors in it, man? What is this? That's the thing. They say you can see the whole universe in opals. That's how old they are. Holy shit. I've stuff. been telling you. Yeah, that's that's why I'm wanting you to see I gotta it. Have it. Yo, that's crazy, yeah. man. It's From yeah. stone to stone. Garnets to stone. Jews and colon cancer. What is that? I thought we were the chosen people. Jews who wound up in Central and Eastern Europe in the last millennia, known as the Ashkenazi, who are now about 80% of all Jews living today for 10 million people around the globe. 
Now, the genetic studies tell us that this original Ashkenazi population lived in the medieval era about 600 to 800 years ago. They were half European and half Middle Eastern. And would you guess that that original founding population totaled a mere 330 people? Yep, every single one of the 10 million Ashkenazi living today descend from 330 people. From 330 people who lived between the 14th and 16th centuries. I really represent, you know, where I come from and the culture that I'm from because there aren't many Ethiopian artists. Jesus, how are we just doing coke? Nothing happened. <laughs> And what the fuck is it with you Jewish niggas in basketball anyway? Huh? I'll have you know the first two points scored in the NBA was a Jew. Yeah, yeah. Fred Flintstein? No. Ozzy Shackman, 1946, played for the Knicks. He scored the first basket for the NBA. That's his fame. Name the fame. Ozzy Sheckman. Everybody knows him. Ozzy Sheckman, who was a great ball player for a long hour in university, scored the first basket. And when the first basket was scored, we didn't think anything of it. But uh, since then, it's become a very important part of history. KG, huh? Oh, three for 11? What the fuck? He looks tortured. That's your oh, powers? <laughs> yeah. No. Nice. Look, look at him tonight. Without it. He didn't have it tonight. Look how fucking bad he played. He's, he wants to own it. He's made a crazy <laughs> risk, a gamble, and it's about to pay off. We move on now, ladies and gentlemen, to lot number 38. Lot 38. You want to win by one point or fucking 30 points, KG? Right? I see you out there when the fucking stadium's all booing you. You're 30 up, you're still going full tilt. This is my fucking way. This is how I win. Let's fucking bet on this. Let's bet on this shit. The concept of gambling is very simple and consists of three basic elements. A wager, an event with an uncertain outcome, and of course, a prize. Due to the simplicity, it may not be so surprising to learn that gambling dates back to the prehistoric era and has emerged in basically every single society on Earth. The earliest evidence of gambling dates back to the Paleolithic era, commonly known as the Stone Age, which was a period that extended from approximately 3 million to 12,000 years ago. One of the earliest gambling items was the astragali, small animal bones which were marked and functioned similar to dice. In fact, the earliest six-sided die dates back to 3000 BC Mesopotamia and were based on these astragali. What I have here is a sheep knuckle bone. And these were used in various games in the ancient world, everything from sort of a, a jacks game to a dice game. And you can really see here how these knuckle bones were reworked, shaved down, and actually number values. This game, not only does it go back to the Vikings, it goes back to the Greeks. This goes back two and a half thousand years. It's mentioned in stories and sagas all the way through that time, and children even play it now but they don't call it knuckle bones anymore. That's what they used to call it, knuckle bones, because it's made from knuckle bones, not human knuckle bones, pig knuckle bones, sheep knuckle bones most likely. One hand behind your back. Drop the knuckle bones so they scatter on the floor. Pick one. It's best to pick one that's on its own because the aim is to pick up as many as you can together the closer they are together, the better. This is good. Four close together. One in the hand. I've got to throw this in the air, pick up as many as I can, catch the one in the air, and I will be a winner. Wish me luck. Oh. Whoa. I got myself a score of three. Playing cards, however, were not invented until much later, in the ninth century, in China, during the Tang Dynasty. Before being printed on paper or plastic, the Chinese used woodblock printing or leaves. 
cards made their way across the world in the following centuries, and the first evidence of them being introduced in Western culture was 14th century Southern Europe, through North Africa, where the four suits that we're familiar with today originated. Join my Patreon today for only $5 to receive a monthly esoteric documentary on your favorite sports athletes and events. Real, raw, uncut, and uncensored without the limitations of YouTube. Join today to see the other side of the sports world.